We are living in a computer programmed reality and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words. I submit that these impressions are valid and significant, and I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed, reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off. Oriented. This is Robert Phoenix, and welcome to the Friday Farcast. It is the 1st of February, and we are um, deep into the sign of Aquarius. And it should be a very interesting month indeed, now that Gemini has gone direct. Uh, yesterday, we had a wonderful grand trine with uh, the moon in Libra and Jupiter in Gemini and the sun in Aquarius. And uh, I, you know, I think people felt pretty, pretty clear yesterday. That's one of the, one of the more positive benefits of a grand air trine is feeling clear and lucid and able to sort through details of one's life and experience, and to be able to communicate them and to articulate them. And today's show is actually a little bit about that. And we're going to be getting into um, peak experiences very shortly here with our guest of the day, David Kendall. No, he is not that Dave Kendall that hosted 120 Minutes back in the uh, 1990s. It's a different David Kendall. He's a, a actually a practicing magician. And um, we're going to we're going to bring David on in just a second. But what I want to do right now, because he's in the queue. What I want to do right now is I want to play you a little something. This is the trailer for the movie Limitless with Bradley Cooper. Some of you may have seen this. It's a big hit on Netflix. I'm not sure what it did at the theater, uh, on the theater circuit, but on Netflix, it's a, it's a big deal. So this is about two minutes and 29 seconds. And this is kind of a, it's a tease. It's a prelude about what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, with our guest, David Kendall. So uh, let's take a little journey into the realm of being limitless. See that guy? That's me. My excuse for looking like this? I'm a writer. Eddie, maybe it's time to let the writing go. But just in case you think nothing ever happened to me. Eddie Mora! Hey! Tell me about this book. Well, how much have you written of it? How one more. Well, I suppose I can help you with that. You know how they say that we can only access 20% of our brain? This lets you access all of it. They've had clinical trials and it's FDA approved. I right, just had a curiosity, and that's all. I was blind, but now I see. A tablet a day, and I was limitless. I now had cultural appetites. Since when do you speak Italian? I finished my book in four days. I'd like to renegotiate my advance. Math became useful. 
12,000 to 2.3 million in 10 days. I'm baffled by this guy. So, Eddie Mora, you do know you're a freak. What's your secret? Medication. Your powers are a gift from God or whoever the hell wrote your life script. I'll open up a line of credit for you. You'll be wanting a few toys. How many of us ever know what it is to become the perfect version of ourselves? What's the asking price? 12.5. I'll take it. Everything I have, I want to share with you. What you doing, hon? You think somebody's watching? My brain is skipping time. I have no memory of the last four days. I'm living in that 21st century. Do with something mean to it. Your powers are not earned. You're careless with those powers. Have you asked yourself what you're going to do when you run out? You'll die. No one man to have all that power. The clock's ticking, I just count the hours. There's no scenario in which you'd lead this life where you don't work for me. No scenario. I see every scenario. I see 50 scenarios. That's what it does, Carl. It puts me 50 moves ahead of you. Worth the risk. What would you do? So that is the trailer for the movie Limitless. And there's a reason why I played that, and we're going to get into that in, uh, well, right about now. Let's bring on uh, David Kendall, the uh, author of the website uh, Magical Mind and Renegade Wizard. He's actually a practicing sleight of hand magician, and he's gotten into a number of human potential uh, techniques and modalities from books to recordings and now to something um, – Quite different, but also very immediate. So without further ado, let's bring him on, Mr. David Kendall. Hello, Dave. Yes. Hi, Robert. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, I just want to give um, people some background on how you and I connected. I've been getting your newsletters now for probably about three years, and you have um, always tried to find certain things that can help people kind of gain an edge uh, mm-hmm. in their life. Uh, and from the, some, some of the, uh, uh, the holographic or holophonic recordings uh, to your um, exploration with Maka and now your latest uh, exploration with uh, Modafinil. But I want, to, I, want, I want to go back in time a little bit. I want you to be able to give people that are listening some history about who you are and where your journey has taken you and brought you to um, this moment in time being on the show. Okay, okay. Um, where to begin? Um, well, I, I guess, Robert, I could go back as, as far as into my, my early 20s, and um, I was just a, just a regular guy, you know, out of high school doing stuff, and I, I wanted to travel, and I went, uh, saved up all my money and went traveling around the world, um, for seven months, and uh, while I was in uh, in Thailand, I was sitting on a beach in uh, Koh Samui. I I met a magician a guy who did sleight of hand magic, and he told me he he did this in restaurants and bars, and, all, and I was I was absolutely amazed. And it was a, like a lightning bolt that hit me and said, hey, "That's what I want to do. I want to be a magician." And um, I came back to back home to Canada and. Um, found a magician to teach me magic and started learning it and doing all this stuff. And in the meantime, I did go, I did go to university and this and that. But after a couple of years, you know, I was like, no, I want to, I want to be a magician. And um, so I, I did it. I, 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 I went at it full time. Um, I started doing all these bars and restaurants, and you know, I ended up moving. Um, at, at one point, after uh, after a few years, I I basically bought a one way ticket to to Bangkok with uh, with uh, my suits and my magic, and I didn't come home for five and a half years. Um, spent a bunch of time in Southeast Asia working down there, and ended up in Australia and living and working in Australia and getting married and having kids, and and then I uh, then I um, upped and moved back to Canada at about the end of 2000. And uh, and during the time that I was in Australia, um, performing magic and do, doing my doing my trade, I, I found certain things that um, helped helped improve my game, um, so to speak. Um, and the first thing I came across was subliminal technology, 
uh, and I started using those, and I thought, wow, these are really, really fantastic. They work really great. They, they increase my performance. They make me do a better job. They make me a better magician and a whole host of other things. And I came across a 70 by 7 technique while I was there, too. And then I came across the, uh, the, um, the same person who introduced me to the subliminal technologies started uh, selling the uh, uh, Holosync program that Centerpoint mm-hmm. Research put out. Right. And I started using that, and that was just like, wow, that just – and I was a meditator. I started meditating when I was 22, doing transcendental meditation, and uh, and I uh, c- continued that practice, doing it 20 minutes a day, twice a day, and it worked. It was great. I, I made my life better. And um, I, I started using the Holosync, and I was just absolutely blown away by this, and, and I, I, I happened to live – in the same neighborhood as this fellow who was doing this business and I was studying marketing and looking at all this stuff and I was thinking mail order type of businesses and so I got to know him and 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 I wanted to move back to Canada and so I talked to my my wife and to move back to Canada and we went back and talked to Bill Harris in Portland and I set up my company Magical Mind Enterprise and started uh, selling that program for him and I did it for for seven years um, and loved the program still use it I don't work with Bill anymore um, and also got into other types of subliminal technologies. And as you mentioned, uh, you know, I came across Maca when I was traveling in Peru a few years back. And I thought, well, this is this is really great. So I promote this things I find that I find have really worked for me. I uh, I tend to uh, get involved with them on some not everything, of course, but um, but that was something. And then uh, uh, most recently, of course, the modafinil, which uh, brings us up to today. So you you you're obviously somebody who has um, you know crafted a life out of practicing sleight of hand you know what we'd call you know quote unquote you know real magic or um, you know theatrical or stage magic but you've also been sort of seeking your own version of magic on another level haven't you? Oh definitely yeah yeah there's there's magic in my life everywhere I look so you know I I, I like to. You know, I call myself the renegade wizard on my website, and, you know, it's kind of my context for my life, you might say. So when you were involved with the uh, the Holosync uh, technology, how did you see that change your life in terms of, like, your ability to do the sleight of hand stuff? I mean, did you actually, like, you know, leap to different levels while you were um, uh, working with that material? Um, it, what it did is is it, it, it enabled me – to get into the zone um, at, a, at a different level. And, and anybody who does performing or plays sports and stuff, they'll, they'll talk about that concept of being in the zone. And everybody's experienced it at some level. Um, definitely if you're into sort of high-level type of stuff, you know, even business or whatever, you get into that zone. And, and when you're in the zone, you, you're you on. It's like, you know, it just the, the, it just things flow through you. And, and, and definitely the use of the Holosync uh, just enabled my performance level to just to get that, to that next level. Like I just was more comfortable. I could perform. I just seemed to be on more, more creative. Um, all of those things just got mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. So ultimately, um, you discovered modafinil. And the reason why I played the uh, clip from the movie Limitless mm-hmm. is because, and, uh, and I'm just sharing this with the, the audience, is because uh, modafinil is supposedly – uh, or the or the the substance that Bradley Cooper's character Eddie Mora takes in Limitless is supposed to be modeled on modafinil. So let's get into modafinil a little bit. Did you have any experience with any other types of nootropics or smart drugs before you found modafinil? Um, I, I, I couldn't say that I, I I tried something that that may be classified as a smart drug. Mm-hmm. Um, over the years, I've you know I've experimented with with many many different things, um, but I, I can't say that I I would say that I've I've I tried something that would be considered a smart drug. I never really I heard of the concept before, um, but I'd never um, thought about using drugs per se. Um, to enhance my performance on anything. I mean, you know, through my through my uh, 20s and into my 30s, I was, you know, and I still am, you know, very much health-oriented person. And uh, that came about um, by, um, I had ulcerative colitis when I was, uh, got diagnosed with that when I was about 18. And I, I ended up completely curing myself of it. Mm-hmm. Um, the doctor certified cured myself of it. Um, so I got into taking all these different health products and, and meditating and, 
you know that that was all in that that direction of of healing my body and and, and doing better things so drugs was like things that I didn't bother to take at all. I mean, I didn't even drink at all because it was just uh, not good for my condition that I had. I just couldn't drink. I mean, I, I drank when I was younger, and I just had to pretty much give up drinking completely for about probably 10 years. I hardly had a drop of alcohol and just stayed. In, and because I was on that uh, health thing, it was like I was kind of almost anti um, medical establishment, you know, no drugs for anything. So I wouldn't take anything. Right. Right. Well, that that makes sense. So, how did you run across modafinil? Um, well, it was um, this past summer, um, and I was uh, sitting over in uh, in Vancouver. My son is uh, is a lacrosse player, and uh, and other sports. We were, we were over at a provincial lacrosse tournament. I was sitting in my hotel room, and uh, you know, some one of my friends had sent me over uh, an email and said, oh, you should watch this. And, and I, I, I get, you know, emails from all sorts of people, you know, friends and whatnot, saying, hey, you got to watch this, check this out, you know. You know how it is, you know, Facebook and whatever, you get all this stuff, and, you know, you maybe look at about 5% of it sometimes. And this this particular one, oh, well, I'm just sitting here. I click on it, I'll have a look at this. And and it was the ABC News special um, that is on my website that I've posted on there. And it was a segment that ABC Nightline News did on modafinil and it's about five or six minutes long and uh it was um it was all about the off-label use of this particular medication and uh how, how it was helping people and and uh they interviewed dave asprey on there who i've gone and uh, researched much more of, of him after that and uh and i was intrigued i was like wow that is very very interesting and uh so I uh, I proceeded to uh, to go out and, uh, and and find myself some samples of it to try it, um, which I did within about a week. I I got some samples of it and tried it and uh, was more than impressed by by what happened by taking it. So modafinil, I mean the the basic sort of pharmacological definition is that it is a um, uh, an aid for narcolepsy. Is that right? Is that is that why it was developed? Yes, so the the it, 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 that's what it's prescribed for mm-hmm. uh, is narcolepsy and narco- narcolepsy for those who don't know is a, is a sleep disorder um, or it's something where people fall asleep um, in the daytime they have a hard time staying awake and so just, it's also um, used quite frequently on college campuses right I mean this is mm-hmm. what a lot a lot of college kids will use modafinil when they want to study and bone up and get um, get primed for a, a big test. Is that right? Yeah, that is true. That's that's definitely one of the off-label uses that um, that uh, people have discovered. And certainly, uh, college students, you know, ha- have over over the over the decades, you know, found all sorts of stuff to to do that. Whether it's you know just drinking lots of caffeine or Adderall or you know all these different kinds of things to try and you know you've got to stay up all night and cram for cram for finish your project or cram for exams or something. So certainly uh, the, the the people that have started to, to discover modafinil, you know, realized how how great it works. Um, so it's um, definitely an alternative and a better better than than what's been tried before. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is back in the two thousand. And uh, eight, I suffered a, an extreme case of vertigo, and there was uh, I went to a number of doctors and practitioners, and there was nothing that they could do about it. And I yeah, vertigo is um, just, just remind me uh, what that is something to do with your ears or balance or something. Well, dizziness. It was dizziness. Yeah. And I was fine when I sat down, but the moment I got up, the world would just went out of control for me. And um, I went through a number of traditional methods to try to, to deal with this, um, and I was getting absolutely no help whatsoever. So I went off road, and and that's when I really kind of got into the world of smart drugs and nootropics. And the the uh, substance that I found that helped me greatly was something called Depranil, which I mm-hmm. think is a cousin of modafinil. Um, and I, and w- when I would order the Depranil and get it from, I was actually getting it uh, from a distributor in South Africa, um, I would see modafinil listed uh, on their website. And by popularity, modafinil was the most popular 
um, smart drug that they were selling at that time. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what it was. I was very happy with Depranil. I was actually using Depranil, Paracetam, and um, let's see what else, uh, small uh, Procaine. And the three of those in conjunction with uh, craniosacral therapy actually shifted my uh, my, my vertigo uh, tremendously. And, I, and to this day, I'm convinced that Depernil was the real superhero in hmm. that trio. So the reason I wanted to have you on is because I know very little about modafinil. I've been very intrigued by it. And based on your experience uh, with it, I wanted to find out and maybe share a little bit more with the listeners, what, what was your first experience like with Modafinil? What, what, what differences did you uh, recognize? Um, well, right away, you know, you have a, a sense of wanting to do better. Like, I want to, I want to do better. I want to improve this. I want to do. I want to be better at this. Um, so, so you you, you want to like you you'll look at the mess you know just like a simple thing like you'll look at the mess in your house and go no this is just not like if you saw the movie Limitless right remember he walks into his apartment and yeah zone right yeah and and he just you know boom two hours later or whatever he's cleaned the entire thing up right yeah so just that I mean you look at your environment go no this isn't good enough I'm gonna clean this up so you want to get in and, and start to do stuff and and a sense of clarity just kind of comes over you like things life looks up more clear i can i can get this done i'm going to do this you know the sense of um and and this is a you know bill harris from from center point i always used this terminology talked about your threshold and being overwhelmed and how meditating in particular holosync will raise your threshold and and big problems start to get a lot smaller for you mm-hmm. so you know, um, you, uh, I'm sure you may have experienced, as many of your listeners, you, when when your kind of like energy is low and, and whatnot, um, it, all your problems seem bigger, and and, and you're overwhelmed with things. Uh, when you start to take modafinil, you're not overwhelmed, pretty much not with anything. It's like, wow, if you've got this huge problem to deal with, hey, you take you can take modafinil, and you can start to figure out what you're going to do. And start to do it, and you'll start to take um, action. It's like you take at the beginning of the day, like you wake up in the morning, and uh, you know, you start to make a plan for the day, and you go through the day, and guess what? <laughs> you stuck to your plan. You got all this stuff done. Um, so that's, and it's not a sense of um, like a stimulant, like you've taken speed or something, and and you're on an amphetamine. It's a very relaxed focus. You're relaxed. Um, you're you have uh, you, you're almost your communication with people is 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 better. It's like um, everything just seems less of a struggle, seems easier and more effortless. Okay. And so, like I said, things get done. So okay, so obviously you've done a lot of leg work and background work and homework on it. How does it actually work in the brain? What does it do? Well, that's that's a really good question. And um, it's it's like I said, it's not a. And I'm not a scientist here. It's not a stimulant. It has some properties in it that wake the brain up. So it's more more of something that wakes your brain up. Um, it's not in exactly. If you even go through all the scientific literature, it's not exactly clear exactly how it works. Um, there's the the reports on. Toxicity are, are are very minimal. There's very little toxicity to your to your system, um, but the actual mechanism um, is hard to hard to I guess quantify exactly how it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what about uh, overstimulation? I mean, if you in the movie uh, Eddie Moore, Bradley Cooper's character, uh, he can only do this for a certain period of time, and then when he stops. There's a major major crash in the system. Have have you experienced this? Yeah, I mean, of course that's a movie, um, and and this particular thing, there's no, there's not a crash from it. There's no, and that's the nice thing. If you even if you take like a, you know, caffeine type of thing or pre-stimulant workout type, there's always seems to be a bit of a crash after that. 
um, or any other kind of, you know, most drugs. Um, but this particular drug, um, you know, let's say you wake up at, at uh, 7 or 7.30 and, and, and you take it. Um, usually it, 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 it hits you in, I would say, 15 to 20 minutes, you know, obviously depending on how much stuff you have in your stomach, but the onset's quite, quite, t- doesn't take very long. And um, you'll go through your entire day and uh, put your full day in, and by the end of the day, hey, you're ready for bed at 11 o'clock. And um, there's, you wake up the next day and feel perfectly fine. There's no crash at the, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it sort of gradually wears off o- over the day. It has it has a very long life to it, like, you know, a, at least a good 12, 15 hours. Um, but it's not like all of a sudden it's like, boom, oh, it's gone. I'm, I'm feeling really, like, burned out or down or anything like that. It's just real gradual. Um, by the end of the day, we're going to go to bed. And like I said, you wake up the next day and you don't feel any different um, than you would have normally. In fact, maybe you feel better because you had a better day the day before. Interesting. And so it doesn't interfere with sleep or uh, the sleep cycle at all? Um, there's, you know, some people can have, have, have difficulty with sleep with it. That is, can be a possible side effect. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you take it, you, it's, you know, you want to take it early in the day, um, and mostly speaking, you won't. A few people will probably experience a little bit of a problem with it. Um, but I think if you just put your full day in, go to bed at 11 o'clock, it's like I said, it's not this stimulant. So it can keep you awake if you want to, but if you don't want to, you can generally go to sleep pretty well. Right. And so where is this now in terms of people being able to um, access it? I mean, do doctors prescribe it? I mean, it, 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 it's obviously it's a pres- prescription drug. It is a prescription drug, exactly. And and hey, before we talk about this, I just I'll, I'll just add in one little thing about the sleep thing, okay. and, and the wakefulness, because when you know if you do if you do a lot of you know if you you know people are going to go on the internet and read about it and and whatnot and research it a little bit more if they're interested in it, and 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 you'll read stories about well you know you can stay up for 24 hours or all these different things like that right, which is true. I mean. It can, you know, you know, you can get away with a lot less sleep, and that's true because you can, if you want to and you need to, and uh, but it's not something like for for what I'm saying, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Of course, unless you have to. I mean, I drove from San Diego to back to Canada in 24 hours um, a couple of weeks ago uh, because I wanted to get back. Um, you know, so there's different times when you, when you can use it to do that. But generally speaking, um, I'm, I still want to get my full sleep cycle in mm-hmm. um, because it makes the time that I'm awake that much better. So definitely if you didn't get much sleep and you take it, hey, you're going to get through your day a whole lot better with modafinil. Um, but it's not something that you go, hey, I'm going to start taking modafinil and, and just start, you know, and sleep only four hours a day. Right. I wouldn't be recommending that. I just recommend you get the get a full sleep in and use it to make that day that you're awake much better. Well, what's really interesting is, is that when I went through my um, vertigo and I was taking the Depranil in conjunction with the uh, paracetam, um, it was actually also one of the most productive periods with my website, and I was like updating my website on a on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of productivity. In fact, it was one of the most productive periods uh, in my life in terms of getting actually getting things done. What are mm-hmm. some of the things that you have uh, accomplished or achieved since you've been uh, been taking modafinil? Well, um, you know exactly what you just said. You know that the productivity just goes up. Like I'm. I'm getting more things done with my business. I mean, I'm just getting down to it, writing more. Um, I'm doing more magic. Um, I'm enjoying, like, like my, my days are extremely busy. Um, I have two, two kids. Um, my son's 14. My daughter will be 12 in a few days. And uh, they're highly active kids. They're, they're very involved in sports. And, and I coach. I mean, I coach hockey. I coach two hockey teams. So, you know, like yesterday, um, I woke up at, um, my son had a hockey practice at 6 a.m. So I woke up, 
you know, and I'm on the ice with them coaching, so I'm, you know, doing that, come back home, you know, I drive my daughter to school, come back, you know, put a full day's work in and get, you know, get real stuff done. It's, um, I, I'm sure you may have experienced this at times, and other people have, where you sit down, and particularly when you work for yourself, um, you sit down at your computer, and it seems like you've been there for six hours, and what, and you answered like six emails or something, right? Right. And, uh, and and what I find is, you know, I've sat down and sat down for four or five hours and looked back at, wow, I got a whole bunch of stuff done, like important stuff done. It's like I, I stick what I said I'm going to do, I get it done. I don't get distracted. I don't move off. So that um, my business has improved. Uh, my income has gone up. Um, my my ability to enjoy the day. I was going back to my day yesterday, so I spent you know a bunch of hours working. Uh, and then I actually went out and played hockey myself at uh, nine o'clock last night. That's a full day. Yeah, so I had this big day, and it was an, it was a great day. It was an enjoyable day, and you know uh, the the difference is um, a day that is getting through a day versus really enjoying the day, right. like really enjoying it. Like wow, this is just a fun day. Uh, like I said, I, I'm coaching two hockey teams. Um, my uh, my wife passed away, so I'm I'm a widower. So I've got two kids. I'm a, I'm really a single dad. Um, so my life becomes extremely busy um, with kids and and just juggling all the stuff. So you know, before it's like sometimes like you know it is. It's just like wow, I just got to get through this day. Um, and well, I got to go coach the hockey team. I got to drive kids here. I got to do this, and I got to try and I got to get this work done, and, and uh, all these things. And I thought, wow, by the end of the day, I'm just exhausted, you know. And it's like, oh God, I can't wait to get this over with. Um, but but that's not really the case now. It's like it's like wow, I'm, I'm just having so much more fun doing it, right? Right. Uh, looking forward to stuff like I, you know, I go to go to the coach the kids hockey, and you know, I don't have to. Uh, force myself to bring my energy level up for them, right? Like, I, you know, I, I want to show up for these kids, and you know, whether I'm tired or not, I'm still, you know, presenting them with the, being a great coach. But now it's just that it's just easy, right? It's, it's like, wow, this is this is great. That was so much fun. It was no no effort at all, and, and I'm having more more fun with the people around me. Having better communications, having better conversations, uh, just just that sense of uh, easiness. Like the, you know, it's so easy to talk to somebody, and you know, you're standing in a lineup somewhere, boom, strike up a conversation with people, right. uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and and magic, um, you know, magic's always been a this wonderful barometer for me, and uh, as to how things are working, and it's like. Like I said before, like when I when I the first thing I came across was a subliminal technology, the Alphasonic subliminal programs, which I still sell on my website. Um, and I still use them. I like them. And you know, I said, "Wow, we use this. This this is this tunes me up, right? This makes me perform better. It makes me." And, and then the Holosync, it's all these things, you know. Well, it's, it, it is a barometer. And then so like now I'm 46. Um, I'm going. Like tonight's Friday night, so this is this is a magic night for me, and I'll be going downtown tonight um, to uh, to a big entertainment center in Victoria. It's the Strathcona Hotel. Um, this place is like the entertainment hub of our city. There's there's several bars in there. There's a nightclub. This place has been there for a hundred years. Same families owned it, and it's, it's a great great place. It's fantastic, and it was actually one of the first places I ever worked. Twenty. 20 years ago uh, before I left Canada and I when I left I, I gave the gig to another magician friend of mine and he did it we've had magic there for 20 years um, last year he decided to, to pack it in and that's when I came back and so tonight isn't like I said it's my magic night I'm going to go downtown and um, this is this has become like something that is just so much more fun for me and it's always been fun but I've, like I have to kind of really you know, it's it's an effort to work yourself up into that peak state to walk into. I mean, basically, because I'm going to go do close-up magic for two and a half hours in a bar, 
So people aren't coming to watch the show. They don't even know I'm going to be there. So I'm going to, you know, if you were down there tonight and you happen to be in Victoria and you're sitting at a table with a group of your, you know, five of your friends and you're having a few beers and whatever, and some guy's going to walk up to you and and introduce himself as the magician for the for the place and start, you know, performing for you. And uh, uh, that takes a, a certain... You know, obviously a skill set I've developed over the years of, of my repertoire, but also uh, uh, an energy to do that because you, you have to it, – it's all about getting your energy up to do it. You have right. to have this really high level of energy. Um, so, you know, in my 30s, you know, I, I make sure I'd – you know, I have to bounce on my trampoline for half an hour and eat, you know, eat super healthy and make sure I'm rested and, and do everything I possibly could so I could be on. Right. Um, because if you're off a little bit, if your energy is just down a little bit, you know, you can you can definitely have a, a struggle at times with people um, to do that. But now it's just like I'm just uh, – the modafinil uh, just kind of takes it to this other level. I mean, that's, and, I, and I still, you know, exercise and eat healthy and do other things to get myself energy level too, but just the – the modafinil just snaps me into this higher level of creativity and fun, and uh, um, I've had uh, just fabulous nights down there. Um, and like I said, it's just something that I thoroughly look forward to, enjoy, and walk away and go, wow, this is awesome, and people just love it. Great. Um, in the movie, Limitless, Bradley Cooper, his character winds up turning into kind of an egotistical jerk. There's, a, it, And obviously, it's it's a... An exaggerated portrayal, but is is there any kind of like ego distortion with, with Modafinil at all? I'm sorry, just about you said he turns into an egotistical jerk. Yeah, at times in the film, there's moments where he, you know, he he, he you know he crosses boundaries. So I guess my right. question is, um, is there any ego distortion with Modafinil? Um, I would say there's not an ego distortion. Um, of you know, and what I think what you're saying is you know you become so confident, confident that you become almost like arrogant or something like that. Right. Yes. And 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 no, I, I would say not at all. In fact, um, because you know I, you you almost become more more present, so you're just more in the moment. Um, you 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 definitely your confidence is up because. Um, your confidence level can be down because of fear mostly people walk around a lot in fear and uh so when your level of fear goes down and you're more relaxed you, you know it's you you don't come across as arrogant you know you come across as just somebody who's confident relaxed mm -hmm. um which is you know a good place to be and it's a it's a very nice state to be in uh, if people go, oh, this guy's cool, he's not, you know, versus, you know, you can think of somebody who's, you know, some young guy who's trying to be all puffed out and, hey, I'm a tough guy and, you know, you know, but he's, and he's in his, and he's totally in his head, right? Right. Um, and, and I think you tend to be sort of in your head when you're, you know, in your ego a lot. Yeah. Um, but, but this, this uh, takes you more out of your head. So you certainly come across as confident and, and and at ease and relaxed and you know it's definitely for like you know for let's say for a man uh, you know in terms of talking to to women um, or women approaching you to talk to the women want to approach a man who they feel is relaxed and at ease with himself comfortable in his own skin right. Well. Yeah, and I would say that would be a good way to describe that. It can help you make you feel a lot more comfortable in your own skin. Uh, some people who are, you know, kind of on a hardcore spiritual path might look at this and say, "Well, this is cheating, right? You're mm -hmm. you're, you're taking a shortcut towards some kind of, um, you know, intermediate enlightenment." And then you get would get people say, "Well, this is in the same group as like." maybe Paxil or Prozac or some of the SSRI um, mm -hmm. what, how, how would you how would you answer the first question about you know quote unquote you know spiritual cheating and how would you answer the second question is this is modafinil at, at any 
uh, way, shape, or form related to the SSRI group of, of meds? Well, I'll start with the first question. Um, is it, you know, is it cheating to on the spiritual path? Yeah. Um, and and it's interesting, you know, some, you know, and some people when I was, you know, involved with the Hollow Sync, I said, well, this meditation program, um, you know, it it, it it ramps up the meditation and and speeds up your progress. Well, isn't that like cheating? Well, I don't know. Is it cheating? I mean. You know, it doesn't really hurt you, and uh, it, you know it brings you more awareness more quickly. And so, you know, does it is it cheating? Um, I, in, in my view of it, I, I, no. I mean, how about if you're you're fifty, sixty years old, and you're seeking this spiritual path, and you've been struggling with it for years, and and uh, and you have a hard time. You know, the place that you want to get to is the place that this can bring you to. Um, without, you know, with very, very, very little, uh, regard, re- little regard to harming yourself. Um, so, hey, you know, it all depends on how you want to look at it. And, you know, if you can take, um, take this and, you know, does, does virtually no harm to your system and, you know, you you become more productive, you become more, you enjoy life more. Um, you know what? What's the purpose of of a spiritual path? You know, to to improve your life, to get more progress out of your life, to to accomplish more worthy goals of yourself, to uh, enjoy the fresh air, the sunshine, to, uh, all of those things that you know this particular medication can help you with. So, hey, at the end of the day, when you you know, when you're when you die, and or you're, you know, let's say, you know, I'm 46. Hey, you know, 10 years from now, what happens if, you know, cancer comes or something, or I, you know, you get hit by a bus or whatever? I mean, hey, guess what? I just had 10 fantastic years, or maybe I live till I'm 90. And and, and these years, you know, that I'm having right now with my with my kids, doing stuff and and enjoying life. Um, uh, you know, these are these are fantastic years. So I I can't go. Wow, well, if I didn't do that, um, yeah, I would have got through those years, and I would have struggled a lot more, and I may not have enjoyed them as much. And so I look at, you know, as I mentioned the the trip I just did to San Diego. Um, I did it right after. I think we left the day after New Year's on January second, um, and uh, I think the rest of the team flew down there. Um, it's a pretty long, long haul to go from uh, Vancouver to to uh, San Diego. Actually, went from Port Angeles. We took the ferry from Victoria to Port Angeles. Right. Um, and, and, and so just my son and I got in the car and, and, and spending that time with him driving down there and the conversations, the music we listened to, and oh, it, was, it was so much, so it was so fun and enjoyable. And definitely... You know, that's a long drive, and, uh, you know, I did the first day, or the, on the way down there, I did, I drove from Port Angeles to Medford, which is on the border of Oregon and California, which is probably, we did like a nine or ten hour day or something, mm-hmm. and then, then, you know, we slept in, in a motel that night, and, and got up the next day, and, and drove all the way to San Diego, which was a pretty long day, I think it was like about a 16 hour day or something, but, you know, we just drove and stopped along the way, and had you know had food here and gas here and this and that and and uh you know where's and having the modafinil made me able to do that um without too much effort like without um without uh making it a real struggle like going like feeling like when i when i arrived in san diego we were like you know jack and i were like high-fiving each other hey that we're here awesome we're just you know we just felt so pumped right i felt like pumped like oh this is just awesome like i remember driving driving through los angeles we found some really good radio station and we're cranking tunes and driving oh it was great and then uh on the way home you know the tournament ended on sunday afternoon and okay well you know let's let's just go we're, we're let's do it and we drove till about midnight i stopped for half an hour 45 minutes had a little tiny nap and 
woke back up and drove all the way through the night, all the way through the mountains, and I uh, felt pretty tired about 7 a.m. in the morning, 6.30, and so I stopped over, and my body's getting a bit sore. I stopped for 45 minutes, and, uh, and and on the way back, I think I just had one modafinil. That was it when I left, and uh, I woke up the next morning, and um yeah, just had a little 45-minute nap and, and kept driving. We stopped, and I just felt, felt better and better as the day went on. By the time we got to the Canadian border, again, I just felt great. We got on the, caught the ferry, and there's a couple people on the ferry who had flown, you know, into Vancouver, and uh, they were like, "How did you guys get here?" They're just blown wow. away, and it, and like again, I'm on the ferry, just felt great, like talking to you know, talking to the people, other parents, and we're having great conversations, and come home and. Uh, my my girl's here on nice food to eat and come home and relax and go to bed. Had a 12-hour sleep and woke up the next day and felt pretty fine. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So the second part of that is this is different than the uh, uh, the serotonin uptake medications, right? This is, this is not in the same class. Yeah, they're not in the same class. Um, I can say that. Um, again, I'm not a I'm not a doctor, and uh, I you know I can't probably articulate all this scientific sort of terminology to describe that to you, other than to say it's a it's in a different class of uh, of drugs than those. What a nootropic is is different than um, what pro what, what class of drugs Prozac is in. Yeah, absolutely. Just wanted to clarify that for our listeners. Yeah. Um, I, if somebody's on hold here. Maybe they have a question or want sure. to talk to you. Let's just find out where uh, where, where they're at. Hello. Hi. Hi. This is Donna. I just tuned in. I'm just wondering what, what do you what drug are you talking about? This is, I didn't catch the beginning. I'm sorry. We're talking about modafinil. M O D A F I N I L modafinil. Okay. Oh. What is and. Um, the so so we did a lead in with the the, the discussion, and, yeah. and the lead in was a trailer from the movie Limitless, which is a a, a, a fictional sort of oh, yeah. hyper. I've seen it. I've seen that. Yeah, I did yeah. see that movie. So yeah. that's supposed to be kind of a a Hollywoodized version of Modafinil. Oh, how interesting. Okay, that's, yeah, I'm gonna just continue to listen. Very, okay. very interesting. Thank okay. you. Yeah, we'll put you back on hold. Okay, cool. So and uh, and also Robert, you'll you'll in particular in the U.S. you you've seen the term like a, uh, like on the ABC News special they call it provigil, right? Provigil, right? Provigil. So well, just to clarify what what all that means is provigil is a brand name for for what modafinil is, and uh, it's it's the main brand in the U.S. because that was they pat it was Cephalon that patented this. Uh, this drugs and they called it Provigil, um, but it's kind of like uh, Viagra isn't Viagra. It's Zildenafil is actually what the what the medication is. Um, so even if you go on, you know, if you go on their Cephalon site or go to www.provigil.com, right beside it'll, it'll say Modafinil. Interesting. That's what the actual actual drug is. Provigil and Modafinil. Okay. Yeah. And and I think you were asking me some questions about you know getting it from your doctor and different yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. So I would I would assume that this is just like well, Depranil you can't even really get in this country. I mean, if you go yes. to, if you go to Mexico, you can get it there. You can get it in Canada. Uh, so good mm-hmm. luck getting a doctor to, to prescribe you Depranil. So it would be the same thing with Modafinil here, right? Well, sure, and 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 uh, I mean, one of the things is 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 in in the U.S. I mean, drugs are are much more expensive there than than in most other places. And if you go down, and if you did actually get a prescription for this in in the U.S., if you had narcolepsy or if you had shift work sleep disorder or something like that, you went down to your doctor and said, "Hey, I've got, you know, I I work shifts and I have this problem sleeping, and I heard about this drug, um, you know, and let's say he did prescribe it to you." And uh, you went down to your, uh, you know, your pharmacy. You went to Walmart pharmacy. I, I actually phoned. I I checked into this um, just to just to be certain. I phoned a bunch of different pharmacies in the U.S. I phoned like Walmart's and stuff like that. And if you wanted to get a prescription for this medication um, for a 200 milligram tablet, um, it's twenty five dollars. Wow. So it, it's pretty expensive. Um, so you know, if you you know, obviously. 
you know the uh, insurance plans are a big deal in the states for you know for reasons of of uh, of that. Now, if you came to Canada and you went to your doctor and you wanted to get a prescription for it, um, it would cost you um, about two dollars and fifty cents a tablet for the same thing. Interesting. Yeah, of course. It'd, be, it'd probably and and I don't. I think even I'm not sure if you know you'd get the in the states you'd probably get the Provigil, which is the brand name, or you'd just get a generic. Yeah. Um, so you know this uh, the uh, um, the you know what it's done is created a, this huge offline or sorry um, offshore pharmacy business um, where people go to find their medications um, outside of countries they live in or if they can't get a prescription for something they want it. I mean, like particularly, like, I mean, Viagra. Right. Um, people, you know, obviously get that online or just about any other drug that um, is available. So um, so what, what, I, what I did is um, I did some research and uh, looked around and spent some time. And uh, so I, 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 I came across a few different reliable suppliers um and the one that i've pretty much settled on um at this point has been uh has been sun pharmaceuticals um and sun pharmaceuticals is uh they're they're based out of india they have uh i think 25 or 30 um uh, pharmaceutical places around the around the globe they have them in canada and the states and all, all sorts of places so they're they're a very big multinational uh a pharmaceutical company um that makes generic um drugs mm-hmm. and uh so so their their brand is called mode alert um so that's where i've i've sourced it i i get the the uh, um the modafinil that people are getting is made by them so they get a package that's from sun pharmaceuticals branded mode alert it's all you know that's what it is mm-hmm. um and and we you know and it gets shipped from india and comes to you know gets drop shipped to people's mailboxes um and just goes through the uh um we use ems or united states postal service uh, registered mail mm-hmm. and interestingly enough um the it, it it has it is not a problem to ship stuff into the us um uh, you know these companies uh, will not ship stuff into Canada um, because uh-huh. Canadian customs um, people you know intercept all you know intercept too many of their packages and don't let them in. However, that's not the case in the U.S. Um, there's doesn't seem to be a problem with it. They let all these packages in, and uh, you know you're getting packages that obviously you don't have a medic uh, prescription for. Um, but I don't know why. Um, I guess the uh, postal service is making a bunch of you know i guess there's millions of packages that probably come into the country every day yeah um so I they they, they really don't do it the, the, the worst deal. sorry robert i think there's some handshake deals too with um with canada as kind of an alternate uh drug supplier um for for the united states to keep costs down a little bit kind of a nod in the wing thing that might change when Obamacare comes into into play. It may get a little stiffer, but um, well, Dave, Dave, where can people uh, find out more about Modafinil? I've I got I've got your website on my show page. I think I have um, MagicalMind.com. Uh, so you've got that site, and you've got what um, other- sure. There's well, if, if the thing would actually probably um, RenegadeWizard.com. I've uh, there's MagicalMindOnline.com. We'll actually take you to Renegade Wizard. So either MagicalMindOnline.com or RenegadeWizard.com, and uh, you'll see a little link that says Limitless Pill on the right hand side. You click onto that, and it'll take you to um, another page that that um, tells a little bit more about it. And also on there. On that page is the um, the actual ABC Nightline News special that I, I told you about that I first watched them. That's on there. Um, there's another one. <clears throat> there's a CNN special too, um, um, on it as well. Um, you'd have to Google that or something. Um, I sent it out in a in an email. I don't have it. I should put it up on my site. Um, so there's there's a lot of information about there. Um, in terms of, of people wanting to to try it, like I said, they can order it right from my site, and uh, and we ship it to them. Um, it gets shipped from India, and like I said, it's Sun Pharmaceuticals. It's the Mode Alert brand. Um, 
And and I was just what I was saying before, you know. So it is. I mean, it actually it's a prescription medication that comes in. So the risk to to uh, people who are importing it um, for their personal amount is is the absolute worst case scenario is is they don't get their package, and customs, you know, keeps it and uh, they don't um, pursue anybody about it, um, other than they might send them a letter saying, hey, you shouldn't do that. Um, but that's actually very even rare, <clears throat> which is why, <clears throat> excuse me, which is why there's no problem shipping into the states because um, if too many packages um, got confiscated, then then uh, these pharmacies don't want to ship there, which is why they don't want to ship to Canada right. um, for that reason and New Zealand um, and a few other countries here and there. Um, but with the U.S., it's not a problem, and um, so you just get your medication. It comes to your comes to your mailbox. Right. So, and it, you know, obviously, it would behoove people to read up as much uh, about modafinil or any of the new tropics or any of the smart sure. drugs. Uh, if Absolutely. The, if they're a good fit, uh, some people mm-hmm. actually in my uh, listening audience do muscle testing, and uh, you may want to get an analog and do muscle testing with it. So, um, there's, you know, just make sure you do your legwork and do your research. And if you want any more info or uh, more in-depth info, you can you can talk to Dave at his uh, through his websites, and that's a good. Sure, and they can they can email me as well. Um, they can email me and ask me questions, and even if somebody wanted to talk to me by phone, if they sent me an email, um, we could set up a phone call as well if they wanted. And um, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it is obviously it's a pharmaceutical. And uh, and if um, somebody wants to do it, you know, they should do their they should be informed, and that's the main thing. And with uh, I think with any with any drug or anything is, is is be informed, right? Be informed of what it is exactly, and uh, what's the pros and what's the cons, and um, decide <clears throat> for yourself whether it's something you want to do. Um, with this particular you know medication, it is something that you can do um, most mostly every day if you wanted to, or it's something that, you know, you may just save for certain, um, you know, certain occasions. Right. Yeah, there we go. All right, Dave, listen, it's been really good having you on my show. I've enjoyed talking uh, about this with you. It's uh, obviously a kind of an interest in, on my part uh, because of my experience with Depernil. I just wanted to find out more about Modafinil, your experience, and what you could share with people. So thank you for coming on. I really appreciate that. Hey, my pleasure. Okay, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Dave Kendall, and he is the owner-operator of uh, MagicalMindOnline.com and RenegadeWizard.com. And we've just spent the last 53 minutes getting into Modafinil and the wonder drug from the movie Limitless. If you haven't seen the movie Limitless, it's very interesting, and there's uh, quite a bit of uh, (laughs) Illuminati uh, (laughs) sort of imagery in Limitless. There's a lot of loaded language in the film. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a little bit of music, and uh, when I come back, uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit more. I'll talk a little bit about the Super Bowl, and, um, and then we'll wrap the show up. It'll be a kind of a quick show today. Back on Monday with a very special guest. Can't tell it just yet, but if you follow me on Facebook and you follow me to a certain extent on Twitter, uh, and certainly through my website, uh, you'll be able to find out who's coming on on Monday. And uh, so cross your fingers, uh, spectacular guest. Okay, let's put a little Jorge Reyes here, El Sendero. And when I come back, uh, I'll talk a little Super Bowl, and then I'll uh, wind up the show and send you off on your, on your way for a wonderful weekend here in the month of Aquarius.
All right, that was Jorge Reyes and El Sendero, uh, the late Jorge Reyes, a friend of mine, who was a master, uh, a master musician uh, in the realm of ethnic music. He spent a lot of time uh, working with uh, indigenous people down in Mexico, sp uh, specifically the Huichol Indians, and uh, incorporating some of their peyote music into his own music. Uh, it is 1.03, it's a Friday, and um, just getting some interesting feedback from uh, the chat room on the guest today, uh, Dave Kendall, and uh, and people were uh, intrigued by Modafinil and also, uh, also wary of what kind of dependency or how it would affect one's personality. This is, I got a, I got a tough room in there, and uh, it's a group of people uh, who are really fiercely dedicated to uncovering their their own uh, truthful and authentic experience. So if you ever want to go in and uh, check out the uh, kind of the litmus test for the show or, or even just connect with some really interesting people, the chat room is definitely where it's at. Uh, we've got the Super Bowl coming up on Sunday, and things are lining up in a very uh, unusual way. I'm working on a newsletter uh, right now. It's going to go out. Uh, hopefully later today. And um, one of the things that I was uh, uh, looking at is th this whole kind of um, piece around Gemini that's associated, obviously, right now in a very big way with Jupiter and Gemini going direct, but also with the Super Bowl. And what we have, obviously, are the two Harbaugh brothers, uh, Jim and John Harbaugh. Astrologically, uh, they are at a perfect 90-degree uh, angle with each other, a cardinal angle. Jim Harbaugh, zero degrees. Capricorn, John Harbaugh, zero degrees. Libra. And if you uh, chart, if you look at their aspects uh, on the charts, so their, their sun signs uh, makes a perfect L, uh, which is interesting. You flip it on its, on its side and it makes a V, which would be half of the compass in the square in uh, the uh, Freemasonic symbol uh, of the compass in the square. But we have du we have duality. We have the two brothers. And there's an interesting um, Sports Illustrated cover that just got released last week, which has the two of them facing each other in, in a mirror. So it's actually a very Gemini uh, mirror uh, reflection of one another. And uh, between the two faces, it says there will be blood. And I've been talking about uh, the Harbaugh effect or the Harbaugh phenomena as it relates to the current social milieu post Sandy Hook, where the, there is a very strong dialogue going on about uh, gun, not just gun rights, but also uh, segmenting out parts of the country, either based on ideology or even geography. And uh, a big part of this has to do with uh, the South, the Southern part of the country. And of course, I've talked about the references, the many references between uh, Abraham Lincoln and Barack Obama and how Obama is really playing the role right now uh, as the new Lincoln. And of course, there were tough choices that Lincoln had to make uh, as the uh, the commander in chief of the country during that time. That's the theme. That is the theme of the movie Lincoln being played out by uh, Daniel Day Lewis. And um, what's also uh, interesting is that uh, we have had just last week a, a significant shooting uh, down in Houston. It happened, but then it went away. It, you know, these things are really unusual. Like you hear about them, you read about them, and then bang, they're gone. Like what happened? I mean, it hit the radar screen. People read about it. It was live on Yahoo for about 24 hours, and it was gone. You know, and that happened right after Charles Rangel, who's who's a uh, uh, a senator, a uh, representative. He's a representative from the, the state of New York. Actually, represents, I believe, one of the boroughs in New York. And he, he essentially said, hey, look, we got a problem with the South, and it's a, it's a cultural problem. And this was in relation to gun control. And then hours later, we had this thing happen in Houston. So there's a lot happening right now. And the Harbaugh theme or the Harbaugh meme, again, is this brother versus brother experience being played out 
in the Super Bowl. So you have that going on. And then what's really interesting, besides the fact that the Sandy Hook Children's Choir is going to sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow for the beginning of the Super Bowl, um, the other interesting thing is the halftime entertainment, and then you have the, the, the national anthem. And the national anthem is going to be sung by Jennifer Hudson. And the uh, halftime experience is going to be performed and sung by Beyonce. Both of them are Virgos. So what you have is Virgo represents the virgin. So you have two Vestal virgins who are part of this ritual, this Super Bowl ritual taking place uh, on on uh, Friday. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, on Sunday, the third of um, of February. And if you are familiar with Jennifer Hudson and what she's been through, she went through her own uh, strange kind of ritual uh, initiation where I believe it was her brother and her nephew, and if I'm not mistaken, her mother, all three of them were killed. And this was her her kind of um, her, her ritual uh, invocation, her ritual initiation into the game. And after that, Jennifer Hudson has been golden. There's nothing that she can do. In fact, she and Beyonce are put up a limitless. And she's won an Oscar. She won an Oscar for her very first, and I think maybe only, movie portrayal. Um, and she was the person that was tabbed to be the new Whitney Houston. She was performing the night that Whitney Houston died in Los Angeles last year, and she also sang at Whitney Houston's memorial. So she's been set up to be the new Whitney Houston. And Whitney Houston um, really cemented her legacy when she sang the national anthem for the 1991 Super Bowl with the uh, New York Giants versus the Buffalo Bills. And that, by the way, took place during the sort of the final stretch, the wind down of the Gulf War. So we were theoretically at war at that time with um, Iraq. And that's when Whitney, and it's an amazing rendition of the national anthem, but now we have Jennifer Hudson replacing Whitney and singing the national anthem at the Super Bowl. I, I get a lot of dark energy around the Super Bowl, to be honest with you. And it feels, uh, it feels a little, it feels off to me. What's also really interesting is um, Colin Kaepernick, who is the quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. He's got major aspects going on. Uh, if you listen to the show and know anything about astrology uh, or follow astrology on your own, Kaepernick is a Scorpio sun. His sun is seven, eight degrees Scorpio. He's got an eight degree Scorpio sun. Pluto in his chart is at nine degrees Scorpio. So he has a Sun-Pluto conjunction separated by one degree. During the game, Saturn will be on his Pluto and his Sun, and the Moon will also be in Scorpio, uh, passing through all those planets. Plus, he'll have Pluto and Capricorn in mutual reception with his own uh, natal Sun and his his natal Pluto. So he's got a Pluto-Pluto trine going on. In, I'm sorry, Pluto-Pluto sextile and a Sun-Pluto uh, sun sextile. His aspects are absolutely off the charts, but I also feel like there's a very weird kind of almost sacrificial energy going on with Kaepernick. Um, his, what's really interesting about his background is that he is adopted, and I've talked about this before, he has no contact with his birth mother. Uh, his birth mother is Italian, and her, and her last name is Russo, which means red, and um, which also is an invocation of Mars and Aries. And so there's a very good chance that Kaepernick uh, would have um, gladiatorial blood in him, uh, stretching back through his lineage um, in Italy. And the language, so she gave him up for adoption. And the motif or the theme is very much like Moses. And his comic book uh, uh, correlative which is Baby Cal L, who is Superman. If you don't, if you don't know anything about, if you don't know what, how Superman came into being, um, first of all, he was uh, the, the Superman comic book was penned by two Jewish American writers, uh, Schuster and I believe uh, Siegel, uh, 
uh, Siegel and Schuster, and they were the uh, the writer and the the artist of Superman. And there is a very interesting kind of uh, Jewish American subtext in Superman, in that he comes from another planet, and it's the Moses motif. His planet is about to be destroyed, and he gets sent off in a capsule. And the young Superman is Cal El, which is uh, a very uh, Hebraic name, and he winds up getting adopted by uh, Middle American parents. You know, Superman grows up in a town called Smallville, and he, because he's here on Earth, he has these incredible superpowers. And it's kind of like the Mos- it's the Moses theme, where Moses is sent down river, and he is uh, raised by Pharaoh, and he's actually uh, a tremendous physical. Uh, specimen in the once and true king of the Israelites, uh, a Superman unto himself. So this is a theme. In some ways, it gets played out in Kaepernick's life right now. It's very interesting. And um, what we're hearing, or at least what I'm hearing in the media, uh, is there's a lot of aggression being um, there's a lot of aggression being directed at him, and about how to stop him. And I keep hearing these themes over and over again to hit him, to hit him, to hit him. You've got to hit him. You've got to hit him. And what's really interesting, too, and this could be a coincidence or perhaps it's one of these events that aligns itself within the matrix that we're currently living in. Here you have the Sandy Hook Choir, the Sandy Hook Children's Choir, performing somewhere over the rainbow before the, before the game starts. And the type of offense that Colin Kaepernick is known for running is called the pistol. Okay, it's the pistol offense. It's made a big deal. It's been a really, it's been a big splash over the last two weeks in the lead up to the Super Bowl. All they do is talk about the pistol, the pistol, the pistol, the pistol. Interesting stuff. So I, you know. I'm not not necessarily concerned about Colin Kaepernick. I think he's going to be fine, but I'm picking up strange energy. I think he's going to be actually fine in the game, but I'm picking up strange energy around this event. And um, I'm not the only one. There are other people that are picking up the energy as well. The the numbers around the day are, are interesting as well. 23 and 11. I'm sorry, 23 and 13. If you take uh, the game is on two, three, 13. And so you would have the 23 and then the number 13. And, of course, the number 23 is an intrinsically very powerful number. And some of you probably have seen the movie 23 with Jim Carrey in which he has uh, a curse. And that and that curse, that story, it actually comes from the life of uh, Brian Geisen, who was an expatriate, an English expatriate living in Morocco, who had a bad meal in Marrakesh one night. And the guy that uh, he... Uh, who ran the restaurant, uh, Geisen refused to pay for the dinner, and the guy cursed him. And he basically said, hey, look, I'm cursing you, and you're going to see the number 23 everywhere you go, and it's going to drive you insane, and then you're going to die. And that's pretty much what happened to Brian Geisen. And the movie 23 is based on it's based on that, uh, the story that Geisen talked about. And Geisen, was a, he was a mixed media artist, very interesting guy, friends with William Burroughs, Paul Bowles, that whole Morocco scene. So anyway, we have the number 23, which is an interesting number in terms of Tarot because it is after the last card of the major arcana, uh, the universe. And it theoretically could be the Fool. Like the Fool is the zero card, but it could also be the 23rd card in the deck. So that's the invocation of the unknown. And the Fool also represents annihilation, or represents annihilation of the personality. You know, the Fool lets go. The Fool is... Uh, blithely surrendering to the moment. So so we're talking annihilation of the personality and the vector of the portal beyond the universe, which is the 22nd card. And then the 13, the number 13, of course, is the death card. So you have number 23 and 13 and, 20, and, two, 13, and 2, 3, 13. And there's other numbers. If you add them all up, it comes to the number 20, which is the aeon, which is the birth of a new age. That's what the Aeon card represents, the birth of a new age. It's the dawn of a new age. And uh, that the, the third actually adds up to the number 20. So that energy is very prevalent on Sunday. 
want, so keep an eye if you if you are not inclined at all to watch football in real time. Um, I think the you can find you can probably watch us on YouTube afterwards, but uh, keep an eye on the halftime show with Beyonce um, last year when Madonna did the halftime show at Lucas Field in Indianapolis. It was an absolute and utter invocation to ISIS, and, it's an, and, and trust me, I mean there are <laughs> there are dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of websites and dedicated serious brain power to decoding that. And mine was one of them; it was one of my more popular posts. And um, I assume, since the Super Bowl has become the launching ground for a ritual. Um, I assume that we're going to be seeing some of that again on Sunday in the heart of New Orleans. There is a lot of occult and supernatural magic running through that area of the world. New Orleans, by the way, is the sex chakra of the United States. It is the sex chakra of the United States. The heart chakra of the United States is Chicago. And the uh, third chakra of the United States is uh, New York City. And then the, I believe the sixth chakra of the United States is Los Angeles. Pretty sure it's Los Angeles. No, no, that's the throat. That's the fifth. LA is the fifth. So there you go. There's a few uh, chakra nudes for you. This all, by the way, comes through, uh, I think it's Alice Bailey who, who figured this stuff out. So yeah, we've got the uh, Super Bowl itself and then the Super Bowl ritual, the halftime event inside the Super Bowl. I believe as Devlin, who is the woman that did the uh, she's the woman that did the uh, Olympics. Uh, she did the closing ceremonies for the Olympics and the Paralympics. She does all of the stage shows for Jay-Z and for Kanye and for Lady Gaga and for Beyonce. I'm, I'm almost certain she's doing uh, the sets uh, and the stagecraft for the halftime show. So what you want to look for in the, in the, uh, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for anything that has to do with raising supernatural spirits as it relates to New Orleans and voodoo. And I'm also looking for more civil war motifs and themes to continue to track what I think is a very strong vector in terms of splitting the country, revolution, and those kinds of symbols, images, and memes that are driving a program that we're, we seem to be on right now, which is incredibly unfortunate. And then there is the uh, actual game itself, which gets played out. Colin Kaepernick, his number is number seven which when you look at the, uh, the, ver the seven levels of Jacob's Ladder, it is the seventh level. And the seventh level of Jacob's Ladder is the sun in gold. And the uh, gold is the color, uh, one of the colors of the 49ers based on the uh, 1849 gold rush. Somebody's calling in here. Let's see what they have to say. Hey, thanks for calling in. Did you want to chime in and join the program? Oh. Or? Yeah, hey, Robert, this is Audra. Audra, what's going on? Hey, I just never get to listen to you live, and I thought, you know, because I'm home today, I'm calling in. Right on. So have you been following what I've been uh, breaking down here a little bit? Yeah, yeah. It, I'm now hearing you on the phone, of course, and I was listening to you on the radio, so I, I might be a little behind, but you're still talking about the Super Bowl stuff, right? Yeah, and I was really talking about sort of two themes, uh, which would be a supernatural theme with Beyonce. Uh, and one, and in that, within that would be some form of possession, I think. Right. I think, I think we could look for some form of possession with Beyonce or some form of possession that is portrayed. Uh, and she's actually talked about feeling as though she's possessed on stage. So this, this should be quite interesting. And, Absolutely. Uh, and then also uh, kind of furthering uh, the imagery and symbols of the Civil War theme which has been very strong uh, on the heels of Sandy Hook. So I think I'm personally looking for those two things, and, and that's that's my take on what we're going to witness. 
Yeah, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, she has people whipped into a frenzy with the whole lip syncing thing, and I just feel like, talk about harnessing all this energy in advance. I've never seen so much hype about the halftime performer like this ever. Well, you know, now that she, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, you, you know, finish your thought because I want to follow up on that. Keep going. I was just going to say, I, um, she even now, after she came out at her press conference yesterday or whatever day it was, you know, and then saying again, there are still people still debating, like, well, then why did she have to do that? Why couldn't she just, you know what I mean? It's just like it just keeps escalating. Yeah, yeah. This is what I was going to. This is what I was going to share. I, I had a feeling you were going to say this. Yesterday, they, yesterday was the big media day uh, at the Super Bowl. And um, Beyonce had her, her – just like Madonna was on stage last year during media day, she answered. Right. And so, so did Beyonce. And she, and she basically said, well, yeah, I did lip sync, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, here's, here's how it really is. And then what she said was – and what she did was really interesting. She said, all rise. And everybody <laughs> stood up. Right. If they were sitting down, they stood up, and everybody stood at attention for her. And then she sang, uh, what was it, God Bless America, the national anthem? Is the national right, anthem. right. Yeah, and she sang it right there. I, mean, I don't think she sang the whole thing. I think she sang four or five bars or whatever. But yeah. you're right. She, I mean, and, and people, I was listening to radio yesterday. I was listening to the sports guys. People were sports guys were talking as you know she would walk by the different tables on Radio Row, and and this one guy said uh, I saw a man a grown man who saw Beyonce and he began to cry. Oh my lord! Yeah. You know I as I'm watching people get so worked up I'm. What I'm thinking that people might be tuning into is the manipulation. Like, they think that they're mad because Beyonce lip sync, and then they're mad because she had to come. And I'm like, you know, maybe what that feeling is is that you're actually reacting to having your chain pulled, you know? Right. It's yeah. It's just so intense. But I, I do think we're in for some, some something down and dirty. It just feels really, really – it's just like they want – everyone paying attention to this particular Super Bowl. Yes. Yeah, I agree. There is a lot of energy being focused on this thing. And also what's interesting is that um, this is, this is the third, this is a 2013. So 13 is really prevalent. Right. And, and if you go back and you look at Katrina, it was the 13th ward that had really, oh, right some of the most damage done to it during Katrina. That's the ward that the Neville brothers are from. And, you know, and it backs up against um, the St. Charles river. And uh, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of 13 energy um, that's, that's surrounding this, this, this whole experience. I, you know, I thought about going down there and just hanging out. And then I thought to myself, you know, I think things are going to get weird there. Something weird is going to happen. There are people that think that there's going to be like a kind of another psyopy kind of thing. I it wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me. I just think that the energy, the peak energy on Sunday, even tomorrow night leading up to the game, but Sunday yeah. after, I think it's Sunday after the game. To be honest with you, that's when I think things can go full tilt on on uh, on New Orleans. Absolutely, but you know, I I kind of think you know, there's so many people doing really interesting work based on you know the Obama stuff, the Beyonce stuff, inauguration, and then of course the Super Bowl ritual stuff. But I really don't think that like the stadium is going to be blown up or anything. I mean, this is a huge ritual. I I don't think it's going to get interrupted by something terrible. But the thing that always strikes me about the Super Bowl halftime show is that it does seem to kind of set up something to right. come after. So I think, you know, after the Super Bowl is when we might really start seeing the unfolding of what this energy did. Yeah. Well, certainly that's that 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 with, uh, with, with Madonna, because after, after the Super Bowl, what did we have? We had, you know, the Egyptian Prince. We had, we had, we had the, we had the revolution in Egypt. Right. That's right. Yeah. And what yeah, was Madonna I, doing? She was, she was, she was, in, invoking ISIS, the Egyptian yeah, god of fertility, right? I mean, this is what she was yeah. doing. Yeah. 
And then, like, all those icons started dropping dead to the left and to the right, you know. Um, but I, I definitely think that it's it's after that you really look around and start to see, you know, what it begets. Right. Yeah, I would, I would, totally, I would totally agree with you with that. And I also – I also have a bit of an uneasy feeling about after the game. And, I, and I'm not talking about days after. I'm talking about on Sunday. Like Sunday. right after? Yeah, I've got an uneasy feeling about that. Uh, just well, something's up with, definitely something's up with Louisiana. It's definitely a target for sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how how are you doing just in general? By the way, Audra is one of a, a long-time reader of the site and, and subscribes to the newsletter, listens every now and then. And absolutely brilliant. She knows <laughs> – you know more about pop culture and how it relates to some of this stuff than almost <laughs> anybody else that I know of. Um, so how are you doing just in general? That's so funny. Thanks for saying that. All that celeb watching back in the day kind of has made some sense now. Um, but I'm doing really well. I go back to work next week. My shoulder is pretty good. You know, I'll be doing PT for a while. But now I got the nasty cold, you know, so there you Even go. Even though you oh. stayed home, you couldn't escape that, huh? I know. I have grandkids around, so, you know, I think they uh, bring me a little gift. How are you doing? Are you feeling better? I, I am, but I, I tell you, I could not sleep last night. Oh. I, I was just – it wasn't like I was anxious. I just had too much energy, and I, I only got, like, two hours sleep. And, and the challenging part was this morning, my kid jumped in my bed, and he just told me he had a terrible dream. So that was, like, how I, you know, I had to start my day. Oh. And I don't, I don't really want to talk about the dream, it's, it's, but it was a bad dream, and he was scared. And so, but other than that, I'm I'm doing fine. You know, managing well, to to you know get get through the day. <laughs> so, <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, you sound much better. And you know, just about last night, I had I was up for I have a weird sleep pattern just from being up anyway. But I was up for two solid hours to the point where from like three to five ish, and I ended up thinking, wait a minute, this isn't. You know, you know how you kind of do the, okay, what's going on? What's, what's wrong with me? And I, I really ended up feeling like there's something something dropped in the energy, like something has downloaded, and um, which, like I said, I think it kind of ties into this time that we're in and, and what's going on and this kind of collective experience that we're all in. And if your son, you know, maybe he was tuned into something too, the energy just felt really, really intense last night. It was very intense. In, in fact, I, I was actually communicating with somebody uh, in San Francisco about 3 o'clock my time, 1 o'clock his time. He couldn't sleep either. You know what's really interesting is that the Super Bowl used to take place in January. So it would, right. it, it would take place really during Capricorn. And now it takes place during Aquarius. And I think that the, that the Super Bowls are now these kind of Aquarian rituals. I think that's what they've turned them into. Right. And, and based on the research I've been doing and some of the stuff I've been putting up on, on the site about Aquarius, whenever there's a significant Aquarius aspect, whether it's Saturn in Aquarius, Jupiter in Aquarius, uh, Uranus in Aquarius, I believe that there are things that occur during, during Aquarius aspects that actually further uh, and perpetuate what I would call sort of the, the shadow Aquarius. Somebody agrees with me. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Somebody was somebody was like, Yeah, yeah, he's right, he's right. No. Um so, so that I mean I think that now that we're in Aquarius, I you know, especially with Jupiter uh in Gemini, I I I think the atmosphere is is um unstable. That's that's how I feel about it. Right. Uh, ripe is the word that comes to mind, ripe, R-I-P-E. I feel like, like I said, I, it's, the people that take advantage of this stuff are really taking advantage of this. It's true. Now, the flip side of it is, and it's not all negative, it's not all shadowy. I mean, you know, we have the opportunity to experience our own version of it. You know, we can reclaim these things. So we can have our own connection with Aquarius. We can be kinder to people. We can find win-win situations for people. We can try to find, you know, innovative solutions in our own life and, and help other people. I mean, it's a very Aquarian kind of thing to do. So it's, we're not limited to how the energy is being used or manipulated or framed. We have our own experience with it. I totally agree with that. And I also, I mean, what do you think about watching it? You know what I mean? I, I find that 
you know, I'm like so many other people that are really curious and want to see, but I, I mentioned to you that, man, after the inauguration, I was wiped out from watching that live. It was the weirdest thing. And I don't want that to happen. I'm trying to get well and everything. And, and so I'm just curious about what, what do you think about that, you know, watching things live? As you know, go down. I, think, I think you got to be really careful uh, with you. Uh, and I don't want to sound like a Luddite or anything, um, but – you keep in mind that you're sharing that experience at that point in time with probably more people on, uh, on the planet than at any other time with maybe the exception of the World Cup or the Olympics. Right. This is a very, uh, you know, large scale event where consciousness is linked together via attention. And what happens during that time can be can be tricky uh, especially if they're, you know, e- uh, invocating and invoking symbols that are uh, shadowy and negative and dark. And I'm also of the mind that it's not just what's happening on the stage, but what also what's happening in terms of frequency, like carrier signal and things like that. Right, right. I think you have to be careful. Um I don't think you, you know, need to walk away from it. I'm, I'm not sure I'll watch it. I'll be watching it with my son, so maybe I don't want him to expose him to what's happening. Yeah. Uh, you know, <clears throat> maybe watching it after the game on YouTube or whatever. I mean, that's another option. And so I think, you know, p- people have to use their own discretion. I mean, frankly, I don't think I'll be watching it just because I'll have my kid with me. So. Right, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that, too. I think I would watch it later. I don't want to take up all your time. I just wanted to make sure you knew that I was listening. And um, I do, and it, you know, because I don't know if you're going to change topics later, but I'm really curious about what you think about some of the Obama stuff that's coming out, of people watching what's happening with him. Uh, well, you the know, whole Lord of the Flies thing. That's, yeah, well, that's really fascinating, that, that fly that wouldn't go away. I mean, Oh, my God, that's weird, and he's had it happen so many times. Yeah, he's got a thing with flies. And <laughs> now, okay, so I'm going to say this, though, um, and maybe maybe there is the Lord of the Fly subtext. That fly was right in his third eye, too, which was kind oh of – Oh, my gosh, and it, it, like, posed, like, hey. Yeah. One of the things that – that they have found in chemtrails, like in some of the chemtrail kind of view, is they've actually found um, bits of, of insects in chemtrails, like insect insect DNA, like fly DNA, uh, ant DNA, uh, moth DNA. They've actually found this stuff in chemtrails, and one of the one of the thoughts behind. Um, why that is, is because based on how chemtrails and what's inside of chemtrails get inside the body, that material binds with our own DNA, and then it sets up really a hive mind, you know, literally a hive mind based on... Yeah, so, um, and there are people actually that have had insects come out of them over the past. Oh my God, it's so gross. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, you know, some of that is going on with our commander in chief. Maybe that's what's happening with him. I don't know. Maybe they're they're attracted to him because he's got this, you know, this fly DNA inside of him. But it is <laughs> it is it is really it is really odd. And there's there there is a lot of strange stuff always happening around the president. Of course, he he came out just before the Super Bowl and said that uh, if he had a son. It's doubtful that he would play football, he, you know, because it's so dangerous. And this actually ties into, I think, I think they're going to dismantle football at some point. I think they're they're yeah, moving, yeah. they're going to move away. They're they're going to try to adopt soccer as the new national sport. And if you look at um, owners of uh, teams in the National Football League, they're actually buying teams in England, Premiership League teams in England. I think there's three or four of them that are. So my, that's the, really interesting. Yeah, and the reason they would do that is it would it would break down sort of this traditional view of like what it is to be an American, like the most American sport. And with football is more under siege now than at any other time uh, that I've ever known it, with all the head injuries and um, right, right. 
Yeah, yeah. and you know the um, the whole strike thing. I was I watched that curiously too, kind of going, really? I can't believe they let that happen in football. This is huge, and it does seem like yeah, I I can totally see that there's going to be an end to the NFL as it is. They make up their mind because on the one hand. It is really intrinsically American, and I think that they'd like to do away with that. On the other hand, it generates huge amounts of capital. Yep, the whole and, world. And, and and the number one sponsor of the National Football League is the Armed Forces, and specifically the United States Army. So it's oh, great right. marketing for the Army. They're able to recruit on masse during games. You just watch on Sunday how many Army commercials there are, and you get kids watching this in a heightened state of warrior consciousness, and all of a sudden, hey, I'm going to join the Army. You know, So right. there, there are things that they get out of it by keeping it, but there are things that they would get out of it as well by dismantling it. And I'm not sure if they've completely made up their mind yet. We'll see right. what happens. It will be really interesting. Yeah, they've got a huge lawsuit uh, where the ex-players are suing the National Football League for literally billions of dollars. Right. And, and if that lawsuit actually flies and the National Football League gets hit for damages, um, that would be a huge blow economically to the league. And the I think the league as we know it will cease to exist. They'll change well, might- so drastically. They'll change the rules so drastically that people will stop watching. That's my thing. That's what I think. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, um, the YouTube um, people, that kind of stuff, or, that think that this might be the last one or one of the last ones. And when I heard that the next one is supposed to be in New York, I'm like, really? Huh. Yeah. Okay. That, so, I, so, I, okay, I think that, I think the big Super Bowl that they have planned is Super Bowl uh, 49, which they haven't awarded yet, but I'm 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 assuming it's going to be in Santa Clara at the 49ers' new stadium because you get a stadium built and you get the Super Bowl. That's the that's the rules of the game. Right. So so uh, Super Bowl 49, which would be the 13, would be 13. Right. I, I think that that could theoretically they're going to have the New York Super Bowl. Trust me, it'll happen. Okay. It'll, uh, and then they'll have I believe they'll have the the 49th Super Bowl. But then you get to 50, and, and then I think things could change because there's also this really interesting connection with numbers in the end of things, like 50, right. 100, um, you know, this whole 100-year cycle. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. And by the way, this is, I believe, the 150th anniversary of the Civil War, the sesquicentenary Sesqu- um, uh, sort of, so I don't think you celebrate it, you commemorate it. So it's been 150 years since the Civil War. So um, that's this year as well. Yeah. I do think your tie-in is pretty significant with that, you know, the whole Harbaugh thing. And then I, I did watch that HBO special of them at the Civil War stuff. It was Isn't really, that, really weird. That, that is such a trip because that actually happened in 2011. Yeah, yeah, that was that blew me away. I, I, I saw the whole episode, you know, and I remember going, oh, my God. And then when I saw your post, I was like, there it is. Yeah, there is something to that. Yeah, they're at Getty's. Oh, by the way, and I, I haven't posted this because I keep looking online for examples, but I constantly see the Harbaugh's flashing signs. Like I do. Oh. Yeah, you keep your eye on them on Sunday. Jim Harbaugh, I've seen Jim Harbaugh flash the Baphomet uh, on, on at least two or three occasions, and not because it's part of a play call. I've seen him do that before, and it's odd. It's like, whoa, Harbaugh, Harbaugh just flashed Baphomet <laughs> just before that play happened. And then I've, wow. seen, I've seen his brother John, I, and I saw this. He was talking to an official. If you – there's a replay of the game that they played against each other last year in which the Ravens won, and they focused a lot on John. It was, a, it was the NFL films. And John is actually talking to, I believe, an official, and he's talking to him about a play on the field. He's, he, both he and Jim are very vocal when it comes to questioning officials. And he had his uh, index finger and his thumb touching each other. And so what you had is you had the 666 
sign. And he's, and he's talking to the official like that, like the OK sign, but it's, it's 666. We all know that. And I'm like, what is John Harbaugh doing? You know, this is really but, odd, you know? So I it is really odd. I'm, I know. It's like, what is going on with these guys? You know, are they made well, You, know, you what, have to ask the question when they're at that level of fame and fortune. You have to ask the question. <laughs> What's well, up with that? One of the interesting things about Jim Harbaugh is, and I, fo- I obviously I follow the 49ers and I follow him a lot. In his press conferences, uh, he invokes language that sounds almost like Knights Templar. He's always referring to his guys almost like they're the Knights Templar. It's a really interesting. It's like a cross between Rome and and, and Knights Templar vocabulary. So there's there's something going on with these guys, and you know I don't know whether they're you know participating in this on a willing level or they're just sort of sucked into the matrix, but there's definitely something happening here. Well, I'll pay closer attention to them. You don't usually see coaches you know flashing those signs. It's usually you know players and whatever. So that that is interesting. Yeah, and I and I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, what was that? Did Harbaugh just do that? And then, and I've seen him do it again. And then, and then when I saw John the other night do that thing, I was like, "Wow, there's definitely something going on here." Anyway, listen, I'll let you go and you recuperate and uh, and have have a good weekend. Enjoy Super Bowl. Thanks for taking yeah. my call, Robert. All right, Audra, I'll put you back. Have a great weekend. Listen. Okay, see you later. Bye. That is the great Double A Audra up there in the uh, Michigan area, where of course the Harbaugh's are from. Absolutely. Jim Harbaugh went to to the University of Michigan, a disciple of one Bo Schembechler. Talks about Bo Schembechler like he felt like he's God. I'll just say this, and I'm not making any kind of direct link or connection, but Kathy O'Brien was from Michigan. That's all I'll say. And she had a connection with Gerald Ford, who went to the University of Michigan, obviously, the Wolverine. All right, it is 144 here in Austin, Central Texas, Central South Texas. And uh, I think we've just about wrapped everything up. We've we've gone down the rabbit hole with the Super Bowl, Super Bowl rabbit hole, Super Bowl number 47, XLVII, and that takes place at 6.30 East Coast time on Sunday, and of course, 3.30 West Coast time, the magical 33 at the end of the country in California, Arizona, Oregon, Nevada, Washington. All right, uh, I want to thank uh, Dave Kendall for being on the show and uh, talking about Modafinil. I was interested, I was intrigued. And uh, we have a little bit more information on it. And then, obviously, Audra coming in and uh, adding her two cents there. So uh, use your discretion if you uh, decide to watch the Super Bowl halftime show. I think I will I will bail out on that and watch it on the back end on YouTube in the uh, safety and sanctity of my own, my own inner cathedral. All right, use your head to discern what's real, your heart to open what's possible. I'm Robert Phoenix. You've been listening to the Friday Forecast. Cross your fingers Monday. Cross your fingers Monday. And my uh, my special guest comes through. It'll be a, let me just say this. If it comes through, it'll be a special two-hour show on Monday. Okay? That's how special this special guest is. Wednesday... Uh, I'm going to have uh, Shelly Wu, and uh, we're going to be talking about the Chinese New Year and the Year of the Snake. And on Friday, John Trudell, the legendary John Trudell, will be talking about hemp in the first part of the show with John Trudell. That is his latest passion is hemp. And in the second hour, I'll have Debbie Goldsberry on, who in Debbie Goldsberry is a cannabis activist in California. She owns a dispensary 
and we'll talk about the medicinal value of cannabis and some of the struggles that people have right now in getting, acquiring, and keeping their cannabis licenses, both from a user perspective and from a dispensary perspective. So we're going to be getting into hemp and cannabis and the medicinal and uh, beneficial uses for both on Friday. You don't want to miss that show. Okay, it's going to be great. And Monday, just if you don't follow me on Twitter, you can. I'm Robert Phoenix Dude Max on Twitter. I don't know why I changed my Twitter handle. I don't like it, but that's what it is now. And uh, Robert Phoenix on Facebook and, of course, robertphoenix.com. All right, use your head to discern what's real, your heart's open as possible. I'll see you on Sunday. And uh, have a great weekend. Adios. We are, we are living in a computer program reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words. I submit that these impressions are valid and significant, and I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed, reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off.